What's going on everybody? It's Jay Wilson and today is the 30 plus day review of the CJ Will canister. Now the canister filter that I've had on the Neptunian cube which is behind you and drained and the Congo tank which has two Whale 500s is that Whale 500s. It's the largest canister that CJ offers. It has a gallon per hour rating of just shy of 400 gallons. It is sleek, it is pretty, and it looks good connected. Does the flow rate work as well as it says it does? Is it as easy to set up as I would like it to be? Is it easy to clean? All of these things will be answered in today's video. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you enjoy the content, and if you do, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and leave a comment on your favorite fish. Eh, that's it. But today is all about the whale and the Whale 500 from Sea Chain. Let's go. Okay, before we jump into the demo, so to speak, we're gonna go over cleaning it, we're gonna talk about priming it, we're gonna talk about adjusting the flow, we're gonna talk about all of the things that make this canister, well, as good as they say it is, or not as good as they say it is. So before we jump into all of the nitty gritties, I wanted to say that the video that I did what was it, 30, 30 plus days ago, was I showcased this canister. This is the smallest version of the whale canister filter. However, there are four sizes. And the size that I use and probably will always use unless I'm gonna be putting it on a nano aquarium or a smaller aquarium will be the whale 500. But I have this one here today for some demos after we talk about the cleaning, the usability, things of that nature. Well, Without further ado, roll that beautiful filter footage. All right, pretty simple. Uh, you pull a quick disconnect, it's unplugged, and then you pull the canister away. It literally is that simple. Once you get it away, you can take that filter wherever it is that you need to go to do the cleaning. And as you can see, this sucker is dirty. I wanted to show you the hoses for no other reason than to show you how thick and rigid and flexible they are. Just, just a little bit impressed. I really do enjoy these hoses. All right, unclip the four clips. I'm doing it in the bathtub. Do it where you wanted to do it. It's up to you. But clip off the four clips and then pop the top off. That's it. This sucker is dirty. It's been about 36 days, I believe, 37 days. And yeah, it's dirty. But you can see how easy it is to clean in real time. So I use the BioCur, which is their ceramic rings, their cylinders, nothing special, but it's getting the job done. And then the second basket from the top is going to be the foam. And then there's this ultra clear, clarifying denitrification style pumice, Esque stone, but look at how dirty the sponges are. It's absolutely insane. Uh, but we're going to get this all cleaned off and we're going to get it all put back together. So the third basket down is going to be your carbon and then it's going to be your disgusting sponge. This thing really filters, like seriously filters. And although it doesn't compete on any level with massive filters, this thing is amazing. All right, look, double blue double nasty wanted to check to see if there was anything in there but now i'm gonna pour out the water to show you how gross it is because i don't think you grasp it just from the media so here you go enjoy it it's chocolate milk remember to drink your ovaltine children <laughs> so once you get it cleaned up and put back together however it is you want to do it it's that simple you're back in business there's literally nothing else. There's four baskets and then the top. And you put it right back on, four clips, and you're done. And now I'm wiping it down. I'm not gonna show you how to clean it because you know how to clean it. This video will be 50 minutes long. So that's it. I think it took me roughly about four minutes. And then I just adjust the flow at the top right here. Super easy. And then that's all she wrote. 
All right, the Well 500 does exactly what it says it does. It's good for fresher salt water and up to 135 US gallon aquarium. Although I wouldn't go that high. I'd probably go no bigger than a 90 gallon with one filter, but I always use two filters. And it came with all of the media. It's got adjustable flow up top and the unique self priming was pretty cool. Now I'm gonna show you the side of the box that shows you how it flows. Everybody always asks that. Comes straight down the center track and then flows back up through the baskets. And now here's every size, there's four. And if you wanna hit pause, go right ahead and read the schematics. But it's all right there. Everything from a 10 gallon to 135 gallons. Okay, so you've seen how easy it is to clean, but how easy is it to set up? Well, there's a video and it's done by CJ, and I'll leave the link in the description, but it took me about 10 minutes to set this up. And if you don't believe me, Go to the Fish Gallery's Facebook page, if you have Facebook, and you can see me, which I did it live, set up a CJ Will Canister 500 on an aquarium, just like that. Matter of fact, it might even have been less than 10 minutes, but if you've never set up a filter before, a canister filter, it'll probably take you 20, 30 minutes tops because you wanna make sure that you measure properly. So, would I purchase the Whale 500 or any of the whale series and the answer is yes, I would However, there is a major drawback for maybe some of you It is only around 400 gallons per hour for the biggest canister filter they have So it was never designed to compete with you know the larger ones. Let's say the fx6 I run two of those on my lake Tanganyika with Trophius in it It was never designed to do any of that. So for me to compare it to it. That's not apples to apples so if I was going to look for something that did around 400 gallons per hour, um, this would be it. It's the warranty is really good. And honestly, it fits the bill with four baskets. I can do whatever it is I want to do. Although I did utilize all of the media that came with it because I wanted to see what it would be like straight out of the box. Just as if you purchase it and didn't add any different media, you just went box to canister filter put together to underneath the aquarium. And that's what I did. And I'm really happy. I was actually blown away by the amount of, I don't even want to call it debris, but the amount of filtration that this workhorse did. But there is a slight negative for me. Now we'll talk about it. As you can see, this quick disconnect is phenomenal for many reasons. When I disconnect it, very simple. I'm going to, it's going to be weird when I'm holding it, but it's just like this. Boop, done. Siphon is held. Good. Now I can disconnect the hoses. Pretty simple. However, these do rotate 360 degrees. I love that. However, when they are placed back into the canister, it's running. I can no longer rotate these 360 degrees with hoses connected, as you can see right now in this video. But that's really the only drawback. If I already knew all of the details, the gallons per hour were needed, I'm redundant as it is. I'm always going to put two filters on every aquarium, hands down, except for little desktop aquariums. I'll, I'll never do that, only for the sheer fact that most of the time if something busts like that, I can throw an air pump in it. But if there is some sort of malfunction with a filter, it doesn't matter who you purchased it from, there's always a backup. And it always gives me the ability to take a seeded filter if I don't have the ability to get any bacteria. And well, seeding filters comes in really handy when you're moving aquariums or setting up multiple aquariums to include quarantine tanks or med tanks. So overall, I think the Whale 500 does exactly what it was supposed to do. I am still impressed by the build quality. I am impressed by the flow and the self priming is extremely easy. I think it was about six or seven pumps up and down. The water rushes into the uh, canister and it's done. That's it. Super simple. With the baskets laid out the way they are, they float. So the water goes down and comes back up through the baskets. And honestly, if there is bypass, it's probably not as much as what I thought it was going to be. Um, and that just rang true by how dirty the filter actually was. And you saw me pour out the water. Now the four clips hold it together. And I mean, I couldn't ask for a better canister filter. Now I will say this, 
It does have a 7.2 foot head height, meaning that if you needed to pump water up 7.2 feet, this will do that on the Whale 500. If you go to CCE's website, S-I-C-C-E, you can find all of the schematics for every single one of the whale canister filters they have. So at the end of the day, I'll continue using them. I hope you get to try one out and do me a favor. If you don't want to try one out, what is your canister of choice? Leave it in the comments below. And what is the one thing that sets it apart for you? For me, it probably has to do with how easy it is to clean. I don't have to twist off all those little knobs or I don't have to pull off a band and twist more knobs and move. I don't have to do all these things. It says four simple clips. That's it. And I couldn't ask for a more versatile canister filter that fits the bill. And if you don't have the space underneath your aquarium stand, it looks pretty good on the outside. So yeah, it's a pretty solid canister filter. And if you have any questions regarding it, don't be afraid to leave that comment and ask that question. Or you can, you can join the Aquatic Lounge on Facebook or reach me on Instagram at J-A-Y-W-I-L-07. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, tweeting, doing all of the things, actually not tweeting, but doing all of the things that you do. Whether you like or dislike, whether you share or don't share, if you came here, you watched one minute or you watched all 30,000 seconds or whatever it is, I greatly appreciate it. You help me continue this channel and I absolutely love it. I'm passionate about it and it's a hobby for me. And I hope you get the information you're looking for. And if you don't, what information are you looking for? What videos are you interested in seeing? Well, from me. It doesn't have to be from the aquarium world, but specifically from me. Until next time, you know what's next. Ah! Oh, you're still here. So let's talk for a moment. Let's do a little chitty chat, shall we? It's a lot of negative, a lot of negativity in the world today, all over. Doesn't matter where you're from, what you look like, what you do, how you speak, how you don't speak, how you, what, whatever you do, there's negativity. And it's always this, this down and depressive style state, whether it's the current climate in the world, the US, Canada, Mexico, India, Australia, whether it's voting, not voting, whether it's politics, not politics, whether it's the media, whether it's not the media, everybody is complaining. Where's the positivity? Where is it? Where did it go? Well, it never went away. You just don't acknowledge it anymore. There's a lot of positives. There's a lot of positives to right now. You're still watching this. That means you're alive. You're still watching this, which means you have the funds to continue watching this on the internet or your smartphone or your tablet, which means you still had funds to purchase something. And if you're watching this with a significant other or even your child, hello, it's another big win. You have a car to get to work or just have a job. Hmm. These positives are piling up. Lights are on, food's on the table. Maybe the lights aren't on, but you still have food on the table. Well, there's another positive. Someone still loves you. <laughs> it's absolutely the truth. Someone, somewhere, loves you, regardless of what you think. And the trolls are still there. The people that will dislike what you do or hate on the things you do, or whatever it is you do in your personal life, there is always going to be somebody that doesn't appreciate it. They'll call you, well, let's see, the scum of the earth. They'll call you... Uh, evil, they'll call you a jerk, a fool, they'll call you disgusting, whatever it is, it's okay. That means the positive of that is they were thinking about you. They were thinking enough to talk about you, maybe directly to you, maybe behind your back. But the positive is they were still talking about you. Do more. Do more of positive thinking. Instead of dwelling in the negative, which can pile up rather fast, we simply push away the positives. And if you truly believe you don't have any positives, create them. Hold a door for somebody. Say hello. Today, I was walking into a big box retailer and I needed to get something because I'm moving. And the top of somebody's styrofoam cooler that they just purchased was blowing into the parking lot. I stopped it with my foot 
and I handed it back to them. Not a big deal, right? Anybody would do that. Well, I spent about 30 minutes, got the things I needed, and as I was leaving, the woman that was standing at the entrance and exit said, hey, thanks for stopping that cooler top for that person. It's appreciated. <laughs> That's it. I stopped a styrofoam cooler top. Wow. But to that person, it was a positive moment. And then for me, it was even more positive because something I didn't need to be recognized for, I was recognized for it. And I'm only telling you that is because there's multiple positives. That person whose top blew away couldn't catch it and they paid money for it. Maybe the last dollars they had so that they can have a 4th of July picnic with their family, who knows? But they still have the top. I get to sit here and talk to you and the lady at the entrance and exit, she saw whatever she saw to think it was that positive. Create them if you ain't got them. Do more. Thanks for watching.